The other day I had to reckon with just how much of a classical music dork I am. I realized that I've started laughing at musical jokes. I was alone, in my car, tuned to the local classical station, as you do, when this fun, kind of wiggly piece of music came on. It's the third movement of Rossetti's Concerto for Two French Horns, and it actually made me laugh out loud. <laughs> I know it's kind of a comedy taboo to explain jokes, but I thought it might be cool to use a bit of basic music theory and explain to you what I think Rossetti is playing at. What I think makes this piece so funny. Okay, first of all, I need to tell you a little bit about the major scale, how it works, and how it's used in tonal pieces of Western music. You can think of a scale kind of like a staircase. The notes in a scale go between the first note and that same note, one floor, or one octave as we call it, up. To make our way up that octave in a major scale, we use a certain pattern of what we call intervals. Whole steps, which are kind of like taking two stairs at a time, and half steps, which are kind of like being more careful and just going up one stair at a time. The pattern that forms a major scale goes like this. Whole, whole, half, whole. And that's a major scale. We can name those stairs we just stepped on using solfege, do, re, mi, and so on, but lots of musicians like to use what they call scale degrees, which are really just numbers. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. The most important note in the scale is obviously one. It's called the tonic, the note you pretty much always go back to at the end of a piece of Western tonal music. You can also use other notes to harmonize with that one. One, three, five, three, one makes a nice little chord called the tonic triad. If you hear those notes together, there's a good chance you're back home. Another important chord starts with five. Five, sev, two, sev, five. It's called the dominant chord, and it usually happens right before the music goes back to one. Why does this five chord lead to one so nicely? Well, for several reasons. But I think the most important one is that seventh scale degree, right in the middle of it. It's just one half step away from one. When you hear seven, your brain kind of wants to hear a one right after it. Sev, one, sev, one. That relationship between seven and one is so close that that seven is often called the leading tone. Okay, put a pin in that. Let's go back to our fun little French horn piece. The excerpt I've been playing for you is called a period, which is just a fancy music theory word for two short, really similar musical ideas smashed together. First, an idea that ends on a five chord and sounds like a question, and then another very similar idea that ends on a one chord and sounds like the answer. The question part of that Rossetti piece is pretty simple. <laughs> Five one 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 five three one 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 three four three two one seven one two. That seven and two so close together there is a sign that you've probably just heard a five chord and that it's time to move on to the second half of the period. And that second half is where things get funky. <laughs> There's some extra fancy noodling in there, but a simplified version of the melody goes something like this. Five, one, 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 five, three, one, 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 three, four, three, two, one. But that nice descending scale there isn't as simple as I just sang it, is it? Rossetti added a few grace notes to make the melody more interesting. Let's play it again. <laughs> So it's actually more like three, three, four, two, two, three, one, one, two, seven, one. But that's not quite right either. Let's hear the strings play it. They do it a little bit more clearly. So it's actually more like three, three, four, two, 
three, one, uh, two, seven, one. There's two notes in there that aren't part of the major scale. It's like Rossetti just momentarily stomps his foot on a stair we're not supposed to use. It's like if these white peonies suddenly turned black for a second and then everything went back to normal as though nothing weird had happened. So why those two wrong notes? Well, it seems significant to me that the first one is exactly a half step below three, and the second one is exactly a half step below two. It's really easy to slide from those weird notes right up to their next door neighbors, which are both comfortably part of the major scale. To me, it's as if Rossetti is poking fun at the rigidity of classical music, like that rule about how seven should always lead to one. It's like, oh, you like half steps leading to stuff? Okay, I'll give you half steps leading to stuff on every single note. And to me, that's part of the reason Western classical music is so fun. It's like a game where people know the rules and react when they get bent or broken. Composers like to bend or break the rules for a reason. And in this case, I think Rossetti bent that rule in order to make us laugh, to good-naturedly troll us just a little. <laughs> 